Hi, I'm back again. Thank you for watching. And this is going to be the last video on this subject for now. Okay, my uncle Joel asked me the question again. How long can that heart live? And I'm wondering what exactly I will have to tell him. Okay, here is it, the prognosis. If it is as the elevated myocardial infarction, sorry to say, mortality is as high as five to ten percent whilst in the hospital. If it is non-ST elevated myocardial infarction, mortality is half of that of ST elevated myocardial infarction. And if you have been following from the beginning, I have told you ST elevated myocardial infarction is showing that his ischemia not complete infarction. And it is ST depression that we show. Okay? So the reason why the mortality is that way is obvious. That's why we don't give them tropolitis. ST elevated my kind of complete infarction, kill wave, new bundle branch block, and all this stuff. So that's why it's worse in them than ST elevated, non ST elevated my kind of infarction. It's worse in ST elevated my kind of infarction. GAM non ST elevated myocardial infarction. Part of the prognosis is what I've said earlier that it is done once, it is treated once, it is not, you no, know, the yastic that is not going to come back. There's possibility of recurrent myocardial infarction. The heart failure and all the problems associated with it paracysmia, nausea, dyspnea, otopnea, not. All these breathing difficulties, their uh, hunger. I just feel for these people. It's possible that will happen. Now, arrhythmias, angina, stroke. How? When there's thrombus and thromboembolism and the pump pumps the blood to all parts of the body and it moves from the valve to the brain and blocks you know, the artery there, the circle of willies, and everywhere there, there'll be ischemic stroke. And of course, death is possible. Death is possible. As a matter of fact, if there's heart attack and there's no urgent attention, adequate attention, good attention, correct things done at the correct time, death is imminent. As we continue to thank the wonderful EMS people who will always risk their lives, and the police officers and fire people, once you send 911, all of them will appear in your house to make sure you are alive. Thanks to everyone. Prevention is better than cure, so they say. Uh, please go over the modifiable risk factors. If you are able to follow that very well, that will suffice for preventive measures. However, if you want me to take each of the modifiable risk factors in details, you can let me know. Leave a message down. Um, from the depth of my heart, I'm wishing you and myself a sound heart, that is a sound pump, and a healthy life. So please go over the modifiable risk factors again. And if you're able to go over that, that will be enough for preventive measures. Because the non-modifiable risk factors are just there. There's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing we can do about it. Okay. Differential diagnosis. Hmm. Yeah. Oops. That will not happen here right now. That will come up in another video entirely because 
I will have to deal with all possible causes of chest pain, you know, all diseases that could be sent that way in details. So watch out for another video on differential diagnosis of chest pain, all possible causes, and it will be out very soon. So thank you once again for watching my videos. Be on the lookout. I'll be ready to publish more videos very soon and we will all learn more. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bye.